house. And this... These load of here have taken away my battery from me. Jane Bolton decides to quit. Never, ever have I experienced rudeness and just ill manners like I have since I've done this job. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. At Luton Airport, the early morning rush brings its fair share of headaches. It's not your bag, is it? And today, Jane Bolton is dealing with a suspicious piece of luggage. Unattended bag again. I'm shocked when it comes back and it's gone. <laughs> I did shout, but uh -huh. no one heard me. That's why I sent it as red light, uh -huh. it? I haven't looked actually, to be honest with you. It doesn't look like it, no. Airport security are keen to call in sniffer dogs in case it's a bomb. You watch, just as they get here, someone's going to come up and pick the bag up. And sure enough, someone does. Is that his bag? It looks a bit... Oh, Is your bag, sir? Is this your bag? Yeah. yeah, you shouldn't leave your bags unattended. You should, leave, you should keep it with you at all oh. times. What flight are you on? What flight are you on? To where? Where are you travelling to? Do you want to fly or you just come off the bus. flight? A bus. 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 Bus to where? Yeah. To go where? Where are you going to? London or the train station? No, bus. 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 Oh, bus. Oh, bus. <laughs> bus. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Yeah. I came with EasyJet to okay. Zurich, London. <laughs> and, uh... Whoa. Whoa. No, no. OK. Well, you have to get a bus to Heathrow. No. And then you have to change at Heathrow. Bath. Yeah, you have to get a bus first to Heathrow. You have to change at Heathrow to get a bus <laughs> then to Bath. Aha. Uh -huh. OK. okay. But there is, there's a bus going now, but you have to be quick, otherwise the next one isn't until quarter past 12 in four hours. Oh, oh. Uh, we so have to go this way. Can you come with me? Yes. What bus is it? Oh, all right. Careful. 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 I don't think he's going yeah, anywhere, actually. I know, but you nearly fell over that. We don't want you getting in, you know, do we? <laughs> Are you all right? Have you been drinking or...? Yeah. What on earth is a... <gasps> oh, my God. I think I'd better... Get the... Yeah, yeah nurse no. security, I think. Are you all right, sir? Have you been drinking? No. Nope. Are you on any medication? No, I don't think you're going anywhere at the moment, so we're going to have to get you a nurse, I'm afraid, because I can't leave you here like this. Because you're very unsteady. Is it drink or...? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's Hello. Can I sit in this chair for me? Ah, what a super service. Yeah. Absolutely fabulous. Where are you going? Up the work. <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> past eight in the morning. <laughs> I mean, I'm hungover, but please, I can stand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's... Well, he must look, He must be drunk. Good career. He's wet himself and everything. Oh, I'm just going to wash my hands. This is what happens to you when you drink too much on an aircraft. You see before someone has a pint or two before they get on an aircraft. They, they think, oh, I can handle it, no worries at all. And as soon as they hit 35,000 feet, it goes straight to the head, and it, it makes a hell of a difference to my person. It really can. It's frightening what it can do. I didn't even know they've checked here, just come to the desk. At the Belfast check-in, Katrina's been dealing with some far less difficult customers. <laughs> I just checked in a man and lady and um, did a little surprise trip with their niece and nephew to Belfast. Niece and nephew don't even know they're going. They have no idea at all? No idea at all. Now, I've just checked them in. They think I'm just going to go and look at the planes. That's it. That's sweet. Yeah, I'm being a good uncle and um, taking my niece and nephew on a plane for the first time. We're only going to Belfast. 
and coming back within 50 minutes. So Joe's, he likes airplanes, so I just said we'll go down to the airport and uh, look around. I said, maybe if we're lucky, we'll, we'll get to go on one. I never said we're going to fly, but I just said we'll look around one. And he's, that seems to have uh, entertained him enough, so. There are people coming up. Yeah, there are the people that have just come in. Joe's fascinated by flying, and this is his first <laughs> chance to see planes close up. It's been silly, look. They just seem so good that they can go up in the end. Nothing else can except for helicopters and birds. A hundred miles away, there's another first-time flyer who's preparing to travel to Nice. 14-year-old Rebecca Westwood has won a place in the final of an international modelling competition. Um, I'm a bit nervous at the moment. Sometimes I get homesick a bit. Miss my mum. I think tomorrow I'm going to be a bit upset because like, I'm going to be leaving my mum and dad. And I'm going to be excited as well because it's my first time on a plane. Well, it's my first passport, because I never had one before, because it was on my mum's before. I won't forget it. <laughs> Put it in my bag to make sure. If I did win the competition, that means I would get a guaranteed modelling contract for around £100,000. So there's a lot at stake. <laughs> Those little children are going to be on the aircraft now. I'd love to see their little faces when they realise they'll be actually flying somewhere. Hey, Joe, where's Belfast? Ireland. I told you that already. That's where we're going. We're going to fly. You're joking. No, I'm not joking, mate. We're going. We're flying. And well, we come back again this afternoon. There's two plane rides. We'll be home before you come back from school. Honest. That's the man. Oh, it's <laughs> Joe's dumbstruck, but it's all a bit much for his sister. How's Maggie taking it to? Fine. How is she? <laughs> no, she doesn't want to go fast. Oh. So it doesn't feel fast, Maggie. It's fine. <laughs> but by takeoff, everyone's happy. When you start to go fast, though, we'll have that one. You're going to use getting these engines ready now. Check-in. The Westwood family have gathered to see Rebecca off. The first model portfolio. It's only a few photos. It's just so they have something in Nice. She won't be travelling alone though, as Elite have sent a chaperone to look after her for the week. Now, isn't it funny that they put the big picture of you? <laughs> outside, one customer's gone missing. We've lost Mr. Drunk. Apparently, he came outside to get a coach, and um, the coach driver wouldn't let him on, obviously, because of the state he was in. Um, so I thought I'd just come out and keep my eye on him, but he's, he's disappeared. So whether he's been lucky and actually got on a bus somewhere, I don't know. But he's gone, and it also turned out, when he went into the nurse's room for a lie-down, he got a bottle of alcohol out of his bag, like a spirit, which he started swigging. So that's obviously why he's so drunk. He's been sneakily drinking it on the aircraft, naughty man. And, um, oh, yeah, he's going to Bath, apparently, so he says, to see his girlfriend, because he's spending the day at the races. So she's going to be well impressed when he turns up, isn't she, really? Meanwhile, on the Nice flight, Rebecca's bracing herself for her very first takeoff. The top of the roller coaster now. Maybe we're going to even out. <laughs> In part two, Jane is pushed to the limit. I've never had anyone talk to me like that before. I was, I was that close to me offloading him then. And it's Rebecca's big chance, but things aren't going to plan. Well, I'm really disappointed because I haven't been able to do any interviews or rehearsals. In Luton Airport, Jane's dealing with another irate customer who just won't take no for an answer. This load of here has taken away my battery from me. Right, can we just calm down now? Because at this you know, stage, if there's going to be this like this, ridiculous. I'm not, not going to... Um, you know, if you're going to you be know, like that, so I don't even have to accept you for travel. If these guys weren't here, I'd say something different. <laughs> but well, why would you say something different to me? I'm doing my job. There's no need to be rude at the end of the day. No, no, I mean, it's, 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 it's a prohibited item on board an aircraft. Okay, it doesn't say whether okay. it's in the hold or hand luggage. 
Are you going? Well, well, yeah, right, so it won't take the battery. battery. Will only be 30 seconds now. I thought, you know, it's in there. I didn't know what to do, really. Yeah, well, and I know he might lose his temper, so... No, no, he hasn't. He hasn't. Do you want to ask your temper, is he? No, he well, hasn't. No. Has he been nice to you? Has he? I swore to Stelios he did. Or Stavros, whatever his name is. You have? Yeah, I Is he really? We, we can't take your battery, I wrote a letter of complaint in before about the easy get, you know. Oh, so let's get this paperwork filled out. We can get on the aeroplane. Off we go. How oh, dare he talk to me like that? I've never had anyone talk to me like that before. I was, I was that close to me offloading him then because of his language and he was so irate and angry. That close, all over the sake of a battery, which you can see quite clearly, we do not allow acid on board any part of the aircraft. Do you know, I should have smashed him over the bloody head with that battery. The Park Hotel in Nice is home for the week to 75 hopeful models. OK, let's do it for the producer so you can see how it looks, OK? V, you're next. The girls have been selected from over 300,000 entrants. None of them has any professional experience, and they're spending the week rehearsing under the watchful eye of coach Wayne McIntosh. But one girl's missing from the lineup, Rebecca. I was okay the first part of the week, but then I fell ill yesterday. Like with headache and sore throat and stomach ache. Then the doctor came and he gave me some medication. Well, I'm really disappointed because I haven't been able to do any interviews or rehearsals, so I haven't had it much practice at all. And the pressure's definitely on, as the finals are only 24 hours away. Is Rebecca, is Rebecca still ill? What? Rebecca Westwood, the English girl, she's still ill? I think so, she yeah. Is? Okay. yeah. So if she wasn't in the line, I was just wondering. That's right. I'm hoping to get better for the final because I'm really ill at the moment and I, I'm not sure whether I'm going to make it. In Luton, Jane's under pressure of a different sort. She's had the offer of a job managing a bar in Lanzarote. Do you remember um, Alan that I told you about that works in the bar yeah. on the complex where I used to live? Yeah. He's just offered me a job. Managing it, one in the bar and the okay. restaurant. Well, like well, I don't know. I've had to. I'm really tempted. Um, I don't want to lose, leave all my friends here and that, but. I'll miss you. I know. I've had a bad day today anyway, but I'm, really, I'm in two months what to do. 30 miles away in Milton Keynes, Katrina's visiting her mother. Thanks. Good school holidays, so many children at the airport. It's been lovely. Um, the school holidays are a particularly difficult time for Katrina. After having cancer treatment from the age of 16, there's a chance she may never have a family of her own. With all the chemotherapy and radiotherapy that I've had, even though my body is healthy now, like my heart's healthy, everything's healthy, and I have the functions to carry a child, I'm not sure whether um, the strain of carrying that baby could obviously kill myself or kill the baby. Well, it's been very hard recently because my sister-in-law has just had a little baby. Um, a little adorable baby, and, you know, I go round and see Andrew and I think, you know, will I ever be able to hold a baby in my arms, my own baby? Um, you know, so, you know, it, it can be very hard. Um, I mean, if me and Julian were to have children, obviously that would be a blessing, and if, you know, we were to adopt children, either way we'd be very happy, but my inner feelings are, I mean, I got cancer after seven years, and there's no guarantee that I won't ever get cancer again. You know, and say if I wasn't so lucky this time, you know, that little child wouldn't have any mummy. So it's not just the person that's got cancer that's suffering, it's everybody around them. And, you know, I do feel, would it be cruel for me to bring a child into this world that there's no possible cure that mummy would be there in 10 years' time? I'm very proud of her because she, she's achieved so much with this illness in recovering from that. I'd be very shocked if she doesn't have any children, actually, because she's just so amazed us at everything else she's done. I can't believe that one day she won't be a mum because she's beat all the odds against everything else. I think Julie and I need to spend some quality time together before we even start for family anyway. However, um, we have been told that if we do want to have a family, we should really discuss and talk about it as soon as possible. Um, you know, that's something we have to think about. And back at Luton, Jane's been doing some thinking too. Mm. 
don't want to go too near the staff at the moment. <laughs> I'm handing in my notice today. Because um, I'm moving back to Lanzarote. <laughs> I got offered a job managing a bar on the complex where I used to work. So uh, I've tossed and turned for about four or five days and decided yes. I wrote this morning and thought no. And yesterday afternoon decided yes again. So um, that's from today. I'm going to give two months' notice. And EasyJet boss Stelios has got troubles of his own. He's sold 7,000 seats for a new Geneva to Barcelona service before getting a licence to fly the route. So he's in Geneva to try to turn a potential disaster into a PR coup. And the problem is that in Switzerland, Swiss Air still has monopoly on some routes, and Barcelona, Geneva is one of them. And we started selling seats before actually we had the uh, official licence from the government. The licence was refused. The result is that in order to fly these 7,000 people, I have to give them the money back. That's the one? Yeah. I'm going to make sure it's right. <laughs> it may look like Stelios really has gone crazy, but if the passengers travel free, then the flight's right. no longer Thank commercial and he can legally fly the route. <laughs> Needless to say, well, he's also the milking the occasion line. for maximum publicity. <laughs> and a baseball cup. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nobody has an objection to receiving money. <laughs> so uh, it's amazing how you can turn round um, yeah, the opinion basically of your customers or people. If you say, no, here is something for nothing, they love it. And I think that on a marketing point of view, it's a very good uh, thing to, to give it back cash. So it's, it's, it has something uh, like in a theater, you know? The Swiss parliament is certainly not going to change the law because of a bunch of yellow dressed <laughs> freaks here selling uh, free tickets or giving away free tickets for a, for a gimme. Back at Luton, Jane's finally taken the plunge. She was lovely. I thought I was going to cry. I feel really emotional now. I just feel like I'm leaving my family. That's me to stay and now I don't know if I've done the right thing and, oh. Well, I do. Well, obviously, you know what it's like when you've really enjoyed working with someone, you get so close to everyone, obviously it's upsetting, so. I thought I was going to cry. <laughs> I was just sitting up. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving, Laura. You're not? I am, in eight Crying. weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks? I'm quite depressed now, actually. I feel really sad now, I told everyone. Oh, I'm sure we're all going to miss her. Yeah. She does a good job. Never, ever have I experienced rudeness and just ill manners like I have since I've done this job. You know, it's something you get used to. You get used to people screaming at you. You get used to giving people information for 20 minutes and they don't say thank you. But it still is a shock to me, even now sometimes, when you help someone for as much, do as much as you can for them, you don't even get a thank you. It's the day of the final, and Rebecca's on the mend. Yesterday I was feeling really ill, and I got some sleep last night, and I managed to, I woke up, and I'm feeling much better today. I'm really pleased because I know I can take part in the competition. There's a huge team of makeup artists and hairdressers who've got the job of making sure each girl looks a million dollars. Naila, Naila is also from Indonesia. Naila. After all the preparation, it's time for the girls to put their catwalk skills to the test. It's a tough challenge for Rebecca, who's one of the youngest in the competition. And not only did this year's contestants look particularly strong, they've also had far more practice than her. Anna, Anna from Poland. Finally, it's Rebecca's turn to take the stage. Rebecca, Rebecca from the United Kingdom, Rebecca. The girls now have several hours to wait for the decision of the judges. The results will be given out as an evening gala performance. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Stelios, and I'm the chairman of EasyJet Airline in, in the UK. And, On the uh, Barcelona flight, Stelios has decided to have a whip round. I am hoping to appeal to your better nature, and you might like to give some of this money back to pay for the cost of the flight and the, the huge legal costs that we have to incur. Thank you very much in advance. I'll go through 
myself now with my colleague Philippe and will ask for your donation. Thank you. You don't get to be a millionaire by giving money away, so the second part of Stelios's plan is to claw as much of it back as possible. Start counting. Thank you very much. We received um, 2,590 francs, Swiss franc, which is 40% of what we gave you back today. You've been wonderful. Thank you very much. In fact, I'm so happy. I'll buy everyone a drink. So this, this drink is on me. Thank you. In Nice, decision time has arrived for the young One, models. Two, the winner of the 1999 Elite Mother Look is... Isasin! And the judges have eventually gone for the Ukrainian contestant, Vika Semensova. Rainer Haas spent a few hours sobering up, but claims he did eventually get to the races. Huh? Stelios is using a loophole in the rules to keep a charter flight running between Geneva and Barcelona. And even though she didn't win the final, elite models have given Rebecca a three-year contract.